The Olden World Written by Tsar Yoshi Chapter 559 Don't want to know. Shh! In here! Senesei shadow snuck in an area of the corridor that was dim enough to allow it, which was honestly most of the Colosseum. A slatted drainage grate for water spills yielded before her and she slipped through, Valet following along behind. Whew! Looking shaken, Senesei landed on her hooves in a smaller sewer tunnel, beckoning Valet to follow her away from the gray light misting down from the ceiling. All right, it should be quiet enough to talk here. First off, I'm so, so sorry about that. Valet nodded, waiting to see what part of everything this was an explanation for. Senesei nervously brushed her mane. That was so awkward. You really didn't have to stay and sit with a room full of complete strangers for a whole hour. A anyway, uh, where do I begin? Uh, Valet shrugged. Seems easy enough. What are you doing here? Sure didn't expect to see you in this tournament. And what was so secretive about it that you had to shush me for? I... Uh, Senesei swallowed. Maybe we could save that one for last? The short answer is because I can and because I have something to fight for. All of my sisters and I want to improve the fortunes of Cerosians across the Empire. I'm probably not good enough to make it all the way, but it's trying that counts. Anyway, about that party. Uh, she folded her ears, still looking horribly awkward. Mandangus is an acquaintance from Jire. The twins and Todd and everyone else are all connected through him, sort of, except that cannibal guy who showed up with you. He spells his name with a K, by the way. He's a drinking buddy of Todd's and might have been invited while Todd was... you know. So he didn't get that that was a closed invite get-together between friends, even if the twins are outgoing enough to try to make it friendly anyway. I'm really sorry about that. Mm, bananas. That stinks. Valet bit her lip. Well, yeah, sorry for being a party crasher. Maybe you should have just thrown the yellow guy out, or, uh... uh she blinked. Hold on. I thought you said you already moved to Isvaldi like 20-something years ago. You're old enough to have friends from back then? Uh, Senesei nodded. Not friends, though I do have some hazy memories. Uh, Felicity knew him. They ran together as foals. But do you really want to know about this? Mm, Valet blinked. Mm, do I? What do you mean? That gets back to things, Senesei sighed. You wonder why an orphan Cerosian, a street fuck from Jire... A pair of mercenaries from Wilderwind and a big, innocuous booze hound are hanging out at a private party rich enough to afford a screen to watch the fights on? And why I asked you not to talk about how I fight? The last bit was because I knew that guy would gossip, but still. You know, now that you mention it, yeah. Valet rubbed her forehead. I thought mana energy was crazy expensive in this place. Yet they've got that big hologram and the loudspeakers, and now you've got that screen? Uh, she frowned. I figured the first two were like gifts from the capital or something, since they're running the show. You have connections to the tournament organizers or something? Senesei bitter lip. I... look. I can trust you, right? Valet sized her up. Her cutie mark held only the faintest tingle. Combined with reading her face, it was plain that Senesei was scared and trying not to feel cornered. Their eyes met, and Valet suddenly felt like she was looking in a mirror at herself from a month ago, getting drawn in deeper to something she wanted no part of, yet felt like she had to do. This was someone who was trying to stay safe and was having everything unravel due to pure bad luck. Bananas, yeah. She nodded, quickly making up her mind. Just so you know, I'm actively not looking for trouble, but I really don't want to throw you under the cart. You were cool when I needed it. Senesei breathed a nervous sigh of relief. Uh, all right, my sisters and I are up to something. Something a lot bigger than just us, and the people in that room since Cannonball are allies. When I invited you over the other week, we were sizing you up, Valet. We'd heard about you and thought you might want to help us. And after talking to you, it was close. We really, truly thought you'd agree with and appreciate what we're trying to do. Something that involves me fighting in this tournament. 
but we also thought you've been through a lot and really didn't want you to get deeply involved in over your head or in any place that could come down on your friends. It was so close we even slipped up a little. You remember things getting awkward, how we talked about what we were up to at night? Felicity was lying about what she did with the prince, by the way. That was just testing the waters. But do you understand? Valet blinked. Well, what are you going to do now? Senese wilted. Ask you plainly if you'd like to know more. Do you? If you do, I'll tell you everything. But there will be no going back, even if I think you'd help us. Valet paused for all of a second and then shook her head. Thanks, but nah. Honestly, I might regret this later since me and my friends apparently do have a knack for world saving, you know? If you have any idea what my idea of a big conspiracy is, but we're staying out. Senesee trembled. Then we made the right call. So now that you know that I know things that are dangerous, nah, you're cool. Valet put a wing around her back. I mean it. First friendly face I saw in the Empire, you know? And I've kind of been there too with the whole secret plans blowing up in your face kind of deal. Don't really want to wish that on you. And you're pretty high strung right now. You look like you need it. Oh, thank you. Said C hugged her fully back, melting into her and starting to tear up. You have no idea how much that means to me. So, we can still be friends? Valet patted her on the back. Like I said, you look like you need it. For a moment... Senese stayed there. That makes you the best friend I have who isn't also a business partner. Thank you so much. Come on, Senese. Pull yourself together. She sat up, wiping a hoof across her yellow eyes. I really appreciate it, though. Thank you. You have no idea how many different ways this conversation could have gone that would have ruined me. Actually, I gotta do. Valet nodded, sitting back and trying to look at ease. Einridge, remember? Still no clue how much the dudes here know about that, but I'm not a stranger to the ways gigantic conspiracies can go wrong and what it feels like when they're falling apart around you. Seriously, I have a friend who back then who kind of trusted me even though I told him point blank it was a bad idea and I knew a ton of creepy stuff. So, if you're telling me this is for a good cause... I already told you what the cause is, Senesee wiped her eyes. We're trying to make things better for Cerosians in the Empire without a lot of collateral damage or making things worse for anyone else. We don't want to turn the tables, just even them. And it's complicated, and there's a lot of pressure. Uh, she sniffed. Could we hang out sometime, just as a break? Sorry I'm a mess right now, but I'm still reeling from how many ways this could have gone badly. Yeah, I'd be down with that. Valet gave her a confident grin. Yeah, anyway... I'm going to go chill with my friends from Anridge. We've got a private box with an outdoor view. If you want to come hang out up there anytime, I'll make sure it's less awkward than the thing we just left. See ya? Senese smiled back. Thanks again, Valet. This is a huge weight off my mind. Cool. See ya. Valet disappeared, slipping back down a tunnel to the grate and then up the wall, trotting quickly back towards Stolly's smell. A full minute after Valet disappeared from sight, Senese was still standing there, daring herself to smile. Congratulations, a voice softly echoed behind her. She turned slowly, regarding a pair of slitted eyes that opened in the darkness. Prince, she murmured, bowing. Me! Gazelle stepped forward until his outline was visible, giving a cat-like stretch. How are things, my little pony? I couldn't help but eavesdrop, and you look like you needed that. Senesee nodded, her ears folding. She'd make a good ally, but I can do this. You can count on me, Prince. She stood straight again. Can I say I'm glad that this happened, though? That she's not involved, but is willing to be my friend anyway? Gazelle purred, slinking up alongside her. Leave all the logistics to me. You be glad. You've done a wonderful job of things so far, and if you'd like her as a proper ally at a later date, I can certainly arrange that. Remember, I'm deferring to your expertise in this field. His eyes glinted with the promise of a job he wanted done well, and knew better than to get in the way of. 
Sinise stiffened slightly. I can do this. I wouldn't have said yes if I couldn't. I swear it on the night mother. Wonderful. Holding up your end of everything, I see. Gazelle gave a full-toothed smile. Well, I'll be on my way. Nothing like enjoying the present, after all. And take a load off sometime. You've got nothing to worry about for a long time yet. I'll do that. Tennessee nodded as he left, strolling away down the sewer corridor. A long moment passed, and she was left once again in darkness. Mother. She looked down, tensing her wings and holding up a hard hoof. We'll avenge you. I promise. End of chapter 559